Imagine you're finally put in jail for all those disgusting crimes that you committed, you horrible piece of shit. And the guard walks by and he's clanging his nightstick against the bars and he stops and he goes, Hey, inmate 56824962, what do you want for dinner? And you say, well, I'm not hungry. I'm in jail. I just found out that my horrible crimes of jaywalking and walking a dog without a license and staring at a woman for more than two minutes without a license have landed me in jail. So I'm not, I'm not feeling very hungry. And the guard says, well, you should order something anyway, because we're about to kill you. Last meals are fucking fast. Has it been 30 seconds? Can I swear? Because YouTube censorship is, I can't swear unless it's been 30 seconds or the whole video is demonetized. Because my video about people being murdered by the government needs to make sure I don't say the F word in it. But that's okay. Anyway, last meals are fucking fascinating to me. Because we're ending a human life. Yes, there's a lot of context around it, but we're all, as a group, deciding to end someone's life. But to be nice, we go... Can we get you something to eat? You want a snack? Hey, champ. We'd sit in the fucking jail cell, wrap our arm around him. Hey, champ. Heard you're gonna die today. But, would you like some McDonald's? To me, a last meal seems a bit pointless. I mean, if I'm gonna die, I would absolutely not be hungry. Like, you can feed me some human shit for all I care. It doesn't matter, I'll be dead. I guess if you're religious or spiritual, you can believe maybe you'd go to the afterlife with human shit in your mouth? So you'd rather have an incredible bowl of SpaghettiOs beforehand? I don't know. Okay, if, if I'm given a last meal, I want this on record. I want my last meal to consist of every single piece of evidence that proves me guilty. So then I'm a free man. We're gonna look at some interesting prisoner last meals because I think that this is fucking a great look into the psychology of both this system and the people involved in it. I'm gonna avoid the darker ones. I'm gonna avoid the more depressing, harder hitting ones and focus on the more interesting and fun ones. I'm making murder fun. And I wanna emphasize before we dive into these, none of this is to be political. I'm not making any statements by reading these. I just find the idea of a last meal fascinating. And some of the things that have passed through that system have been a little offbeat. I just wanna make jokes about things that are dark and scary so that the world seems like a brighter place. You're welcome. First up, we've got Timothy McVeigh. Timothy McVeigh. Tim Timothy McVeigh. <laughs> Everyone's got a weird name. He was found guilty of 168 counts of murder. And his final meal was two pints of mint chocolate chip ice cream. I don't know if I want to taint this running joke I've got on my channel. We bring up mint chocolate chip a lot. Maybe there is something soothing to it, though. Maybe I was on to something. Maybe the only thing that can quell the raging fire that you have down in your soul, that horrible bloodlust, that fucking demon ripping apart your insides left and right from a spiritual level, the only thing to make him calm down, sit, roll over, and beg like the good dog that he should be, that we keep him on a leash as a sane human, is a nice cold bowl of mint chocolate chip ice cream. I don't know, man, 168 counts of murder is so much. I don't think there's any food I could eat that could soothe me. I'd be jittering around like a coke fiend who just fell into a bottle of Dr. Pepper. On the bright side, he wasn't very complicated with his ice cream flavor. He didn't ask for like, oh, I want mint chocolate chip with sprinkles and cookie dough and then put some gummy worms on top and like whip in some strawberries. All I'm saying is I don't think the Oklahoma City bomber is going to get his name on a Ben and Jerry's flavor anytime soon. Next up is John Wayne Gacy. I don't think I need to tell you who that is. But let's just say he's the clown that you don't want showing up to your birthday party. You know how people thought Pennywise was scary? Uh-uh. 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 John Wayne Gacy's last meal was 12 fried shrimp, a bucket of original recipe Kentucky fried chicken, french fries, and a pound of strawberries. And apparently, John Wayne Gacy wanted to hit up this KFC because he managed three of them before he was convicted. See, I thought he'd be going after the KFC because he thought that he could eat it before his execution and therefore get his death penalty postponed because he'd be spraying painful diarrhea on the prison floor for three days straight. Ricky Ray Rector killed a man in a restaurant, 
then decided, all right, I'll surrender to the police and go to jail, except fuck that, no I won't. Then he shot a cop in the back of the head and shot himself in the head, effectively lobotomizing himself. This is important to know because Ricky Ray Rector ordered steak, fried chicken, cherry Kool-Aid, and pecan pie for his last meal. And as he was leaving to go to his execution, he said to the guard, I'm saving that pie for later. Yes, that's tragic, but also really funny. Ronnie Lee Gardner was a really strange one. He was apparently killed by firing squad in 2010, which to me seems a little archaic. Even more peculiar is the officers that fired at him were given a commemorative coin to celebrate the occasion. You wanna put that in your coin collection? Your little quarters across America? Your little Sacagawea dollars? Your little old JFK dollars that they're nickels or whatever the fuck 50 cent pieces they don't make anymore? Ah, oh, son, that one right there, you can't use that in any vending machine, but that proves that I killed a man. What really caught my eye with him though is that he wanted to eat while watching the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy. Now, I don't know about you, I like the Lord of the Rings movies. They're really good. I like Lord of the Rings in general, but I don't think I could watch the entire trilogy in one sitting, even if I was going to die. I think by the eighth hour, I'd be like reaching for the officer's gun and pointing it to my own fucking head. Those are some long movies. Those are, how long is that? Those movies are 11 and a half hours long total. I don't think I could do anything for 11 and a half hours. I can't even sleep for 11 and a half hours if I had to. Victor Harry Fueger asked for well, probably what we would all ask for our final meal. A single olive with the pit still in it. And he did this because he wanted to be buried with it and have the pit grow into an olive tree, which is a symbol of peace. That's wonderful, Victor. That's an incredible thing you want to do for humanity. And normally I'd applaud such efforts, except Victor kidnapped a doctor and shot him in the head so he can go fuck himself. So James Edward Smith... I'm not going to go into details, but of course he committed some murders. Smith's mother defended her son by saying that he was brainwashed because he practiced black magic and voodoo. Now, obviously you should throw that argument the fuck out. You shouldn't even consider it, except James Smith coincided and conceded, yeah, I, I've been practicing voodoo. And he really made his point because for his last meal, he wanted recundant dirt which is associated with voodoo rituals. He wanted to mark his body in a way that his soul would be trapped on earth so he could roam it forever as a ghost. The government told him to go fuck himself and instead for his last meal, he received a yogurt. <laughs> Just a, <laughs> that's kind of the same thing. Hey man, we couldn't get any of your magic bullshit voodoo sand. Here's a yogurt. <laughs> Here's a da do you like Danimals? Do you like sprinklings? What'd you get? What'd you get? What'd you get? <laughs> and now we have to talk about a real piece of shit who ruined it for everybody. Lawrence Russell Brewer. Just, oh God, what a piece of shit. He was a w I don't know if I'm allowed to say that term on YouTube without getting censored, even though this technically is in a historical and commentary style context. Uh, let's just say he really, really, really liked white people and didn't like anyone who wasn't white. So already a real, real despicable, horrible, terrible person who did some terrible crimes. I'm not even going to talk about them. They're horrible. Lawrence Russell Brewer's last meal was two chicken fried steaks smothered in gravy with sliced onions, a triple meat bacon cheeseburger with fixings on the side, a cheese omelet with ground beef, tomatoes, onions, bell peppers, and jalapenos, a large bowl of fried okra, with ketchup, one pound of barbecue with half a loaf of white bread, three fajitas with fixings, a meat lover's pizza, three root beers, one pint of bluebell vanilla ice cream, and a slab of peanut butter fudge with crushed peanuts. But when he got his meal, he refused to eat any of it and said, oh, I'm not hungry. This pissed off Texas officials so much that in 2011, they ended their 87 year long tradition of providing last meals to prisoners in Texas. All I know is the next time I take a fat shit, particularly one that upsets my sensitive tummy, I'm going to name it a Lawrence Russell Brewer. And I hope you out there do too. Eileen Woronos. I... 
Eileen Wurona war, war killed seven men and was going to be killed and declined having a special last meal. That's not uncommon. A lot of prisoners decline a special last meal, but she ended up eating and decided to just eat some burgers and snacks from the prison canteen. That's just a wasted opportunity. You, you had everything at your fingertips. You finally get something and you decide to just keep eating prison food. You know, I could, I could make my own prison food at home. I don't need to kill people to get it. You just take a frozen dinner and leave it on the counter until it thaws naturally and then kind of mash it up a bit. And that's basically a prison dinner. And look, that recipe didn't require you to kill anybody. Isn't that cool? Fritz Harman was known as the Butcher of Hanover and killed a bunch of people in the 1920s. Not only was he sentenced to death by guillotine, but his final meal was an expensive cigar and some Brazilian coffee. God, that's so fucking cool. But then you remember that like he killed a bunch of people and that's not cool. Fuck, that's just so cool. Margie Velma Barfield was a woman who killed some people. Her final meal was a bag of cheese doodles and a 12 ounce can of Coke, which really disappoints me because you didn't get like puffy Cheetos or cheese puffs. You had to go with cheese doodles. Does anyone out there like wise foods? I feel like Wise's slogan should be, oh, it's all we have. Roger Casement was killed in 1916 for treason. His final meal was a piece of sacramental bread because he converted to Catholicism, and his last wish was to go to death with the body of his god. When you really think about it, Catholicism's pretty fucking metal. Matthias Kneisel, executed in 1902, requested six glasses of beer for his last meal because he was a real fucking party animal. A murderer in Malaysia named Mona Fonde declined to have a special last meal, but she was instead given a dinner from KFC. And again, that seems to play counterintuitive to the whole execution thing. Why do they want to clean up diarrhea? Clarence Ray Allen was minding his own business one day, just thinking and stewing over the fact that he was in jail for murder. So he decided to up the ante while he was in jail and order hits to have even more murders attributed to his name. He was put to death for that. When he was put to death, he requested a last meal of buffalo steak, fry bread, Kentucky Fried Chicken, which is a strangely popular running theme, sugar-free pecan pie, sugar-free black walnut ice cream, and whole milk. He let the ice cream thaw for an hour and then turned it into a milkshake by hand. Which to me is a hilarious visual. You have a man who's committed a bunch of murders and convinced other people to commit murders for him while he's already in jail for murders and he's about to be led to the gas chamber or the lethal injection table or what the fuck ever and you have him with his little cup of ice cream and his other hand in there going and he's gotta get the consistency just right so it's just oh no it's still it's still too thick how much time do i have for all those people i killed i got another 45 minutes okay oh that's perfect oh you want some you want to try it mr guard I swear it's, I swear it's delicious. Odell Barnes Jr. requested a last meal of justice, equality, and world peace. Come on, man. You're already a convicted murderer. Don't pussy out now. Charles Brooks Jr. has an interesting one because I think there was a clerical error on his. I think they accidentally added a made-up item to his list of last meal items. Okay, so he has a T-bone steak, french fries, ketchup, biscuits, peach cobbler, iced tea, and warm crasta cheer sauce, warm crystally sauce, war bequester sauce, weiss cheester sauce. I've never heard of this. All I'm going to say about Olton Coleman, who killed eight people in Ohio, is that he absolutely deserved the death penalty. He ordered a filet mignon steak. Well done. That's the most heinous part of his crimes. Well done. What the fuck is wrong with you? Gary Lee Davis turned this into a communal affair. This murderer decided to have chocolate and vanilla ice cream cups for his final meal, and he shared them with the prison superintendent and the manager. Oh, oh, burn in hell, you piece of shit. John Deering's entire last meal simply says, pheasant. Damn, okay. 
Mr. Rich Boy. I'm sure he pulled up in his Rolls Royce to his execution and made sure that the chair was made by Gucci. Robert Alton Harris wanted a last meal of a bucket of KFC. I don't... I don't want an upset tummy and a horrible, greasy-feeling skin before my final days on Earth, but I guess these people are okay with it. Anyway, KFC bucket, two large Domino's pizza, some ice cream, a bag of jelly beans, a six-pack of Pepsi, and a pack of Camel cigarettes. However, Vernal Crittendon, who worked at the prison and was responsible for dealing with Robert Alton Harris, said that instead of Domino's pizza, they should serve him tombstone pizzas, which they did. Yeah, you know, frozen pizzas, not fresh delivery pizza. I guess this guy wanted one last fuck you on Mr. Alton Harris? No, no, wait, 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 he, he's getting killed today? And that motherfucker gets Domino's? I don't even get Domino's and I work here. No, we, here, go to the break room, get him the tombstone. Bring the Domino's into the, the fucking employee lounge. You set it right there. Put the meat lovers over there, put the cheese over there. We'll divvy him up. This bitch gets the tombstone that I brought in for this week's lunch because my wife is too fucking sick to cook. Walter Bernard Legrand wanted six fried eggs over easy, 16 strips of bacon, a large serving of hash browns, a pint of pineapple sherbet, a breakfast steak well done because he's a fucking idiot, a cup of ice, a can of 7-Up Dr. Pepper and Coca-Cola, hot sauce, a cup of coffee, two packs of sugar, and most curiously of all, four rolling. For those of you who maybe live outside of America or don't know, Rolaids is an antacid. So Mr. Legrand was worried about having an upset stomach before his death. Clayton Drell Lockett wanted a Chateaubriand steak, which is a fancy cut of steak, sorta. Shrimp, a large baked potato, and a Kentucky bourbon pecan pie. The meal was denied because it exceeded the $15 limit, which seems pretty fucking cheap if this is the last, like, thing that you're gonna give to these people before you kill them. He was given a separate offer as kind of like a peacemaking thing from the warden for a dinner from Western Sizzlin, which is a chain restaurant steakhouse in the southern United States. I don't know, man. I would have cut my losses. If I'm finding out I gotta eat prison food because my, like, ritzy little fancy steak dinner's not gonna happen, yeah, you can give me a fucking coupon to the local chop shop, fine. I'll take it. I'm not going to be happy about it, but I'll take it. You've ruined my execution. <laughs> I don't even want to get executed today. I was looking forward to it, but you didn't give me my steak. Marion Albert Pruitt wanted a stuffed crust pizza from Pizza Hut, four Burger King Whoppers, a large order of French fries, three two-liter bottles of Pepsi, a bucket of ice, a bottle of ketchup, salt, fried eggplant, fried squash, fried okra, and a pecan pie. He was interviewed before his execution, and he said he also wanted to have a roast duck for his last meal, but declined because he thought the prison wouldn't be able to make it for him. So now you're gonna get picky? Now you're gonna lower your standards after you wanted a whole Pizza Hut pizza, four Burger King Whoppers, a large order of fries, a three two liter bottle of Pepsi, a bucket of ice, a bottle of ketchup, salt, fried egg, plant fried squash, fried okra, and pecan pie. Now you're gonna say, oh, yeah, I just don't think the prison could handle my request. Fuck you, you prissy piece of shit. Although, in that same interview, he said that he planned to share his last meal with another prisoner who was being executed that day. See, normally this is the part where I'd say like, oh, well, that's nice, that's lovely. No! This guy killed people! He fucking killed... Hang on. At, at least five. He, under his list, they put five with a plus mark for victims. He killed a minimum of five. Theoretically, he could have killed thousands. Coy Wayne Westbrook was given baked chicken, mashed potatoes, country gravy, green bean sliced bread, and a mandarin orange cake with a choice of water, tea, or punch, which is the standard meal most of the time. He refused it and said, boy, do I wish Texas could offer last meal requests again. You see, Lawrence Russell Brewer, you fuck. You ruined it for everyone! Philip Ray Workman declined a special meal, but said he wanted a large vegetarian pizza to be given to a homeless person in Nashville, Tennessee. The prison said no, because they thought that was stupid. But then people following the case 
flooded homeless shelters in Nashville, Tennessee with vegetarian pizzas. I like to imagine this is like a Willy Wonka or Cloudy with a chance of meatball style scenario though, where you go to the local homeless shelter and you open the door and just vegetarian pizzas are spilling out. Everyone starts crying. They're like, it's a miracle. My God, it's a miracle. And it's like blowing out the fucking chimney and spraying out the windows. There's like no boxes or anything. And finally, we have my favorite one on this list. Thomas J. Grasso. Grasso killed some people, and yeah, he was a big asshole, but his last meal consisted of a half a dozen spare ribs, two dozen clams, two dozen mussels, a double cheeseburger from Burger King, two strawberry milkshakes, half a pumpkin pie, strawberries, and a can of SpaghettiOs with meatballs. He got everything on that list, even though it's a bit ridiculous out there and a a little picky, but he got everything except instead of SpaghettiOs, he got spaghetti. Now, why is that important? Because Grasso's last words were, and I quote, I did not get my SpaghettiOs. I got spaghetti. I want the press to know this. That is a man of conviction. You're already a huge piece of shit. You've already ruined other lives. You are going to die. And you've been given a pretty outlandish request in terms of your final reward. And what do you do? You still bitch about it. You still whine. You're a man of conviction down to when it really doesn't matter. Good on you, Thomas Grasso. And I wanted to read that one because if you like this, well... Maybe I'll look at Prisoner's Last Words. There's some fucking weird ones there too that I am proud to share. Let me know.